welcome to Occupy Forum. I'm Ruthie. I'm one of the coordinators of the forum. And uh, yeah, we are so glad to have you all here tonight. Um, Sandra is the one who organized this, and I want to let her introduce the Green Party candidate. Thank you. This is about the third forum um, that Ruthie and I put together. You know, we had Jill Stein here last September, and we had uh, Mayor of uh, Richmond, Gail McLaughlin, here in January. And now we have six of just about the most super candidates running for state and federal offices, I think, that the Green Party has ever had. And um, I noticed over there there are t-shirts for our candidate for governor, Louis Rodriguez. That's very nice. So Louis is here to talk. And Jenna Goodman, there's a basket over there. She has buttons, she has brochures, information about her. And um, she is from Vallejo. And she'll be talking tonight. And she's running for lieutenant governor. governor. <laughs> Next to her is Ellen Brown. And Ellen Brown is, I just got electrocuted. <laughs> Ellen Brown um, is running for treasurer, state treasurer. She has written a number of books, but her two most recent books, we have one copy uh, left of um, her most recent book. And we're going to find a way to get more of them because many people are interested in having them. Um, next to her is Laura Wells. Laura is running for controller. And uh, wouldn't it be awesome to have Ellen Brown treasurer and Laura Wells? <laughs> State and shape in 60 days or what? Never mind the first hundred. And David Curtis is running for Secretary of State. Would also be awesome to have um, David Curtis. <laughs> and, uh, You've got to get away from the speaker. Thank you. And uh, Barry Hermerson. It, now David is from Marin. Barry Hermerson is from San Francisco, and he has run against Nancy Pelosi a couple of times. Um, this time his goal is to be one of the top two vote getters for U.S. Congress District 12 in San Francisco. Um, I'm just curious with all the people here, how many people are from Contra Costa County? Looks like a couple. How many people are from Alameda County? Looks like a dozen. How many people are from San Francisco County? Born and raised. All right. <laughs> Um, how many people are from Marin County? From the data. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's good. Thank you very much for all San of you Mateo coming County. out. San Mateo. San Mateo and, County. I'm sorry, San Mateo County. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, I'm running to. What are you running for? I'm running for the police. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alex right. Nieto, Presidente. All right. Solano, 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 Solano County. Napa. Napa County. And, and what other counties are here? LA County. LA County. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to start off with something called a fishbowl. And a fishbowl is when people all talk together. So these six are going to be the only people talking. We're going to listen to them. They picked about three different topics. They'll talk nine or ten minutes on, half hour. And then we'll have a question and answer. And if we have come up with a laptop that we can show a video, did anybody come up with a laptop? Oh, I have a laptop. Um, yeah, is it a CD? Is it a CD, Louis? Or a... No. That's, that's about the video we have. We have a video. The idea was to see if we had a projector. So oh. that we have that. Okay. Well, I have a laptop if there's Wi-Fi. Oh. But we don't have a projector. I'd rather hear live people. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, then we're going to have a wrap up five minutes from each of the candidates. And you all found the restrooms in back. The women's is through the door to the right on the main floor, and the men's is at the top of the stairs. And there's uh, nuts and chocolates and uh, water over on the table. Feel free to move around as you need to. So we're going to turn it over to our six great candidates and the fishbowl. And uh, maybe, Ellen, do you want to start with your topic? Mike's a little quirky, but really Okay. Thanks. Um, well, my number one issue is always... Could you introduce yourself? Oh, sorry. I'm Ellen Brown, and I'm running for state treasurer. Um, my number one issue is always the giant sucking sound of money going to Wall Street. 
we're interested fees, which is money that we could be saving if we had our own state-owned bank. We could save. We could save fifty percent on the cost of infrastructure because that's how much we spend on average. Like if when you fund something through a bond issue, for example, this Bay Bridge retrofit that we just drove over was supposed to be six billion, and it's. 12 billion with interest and fees. The Delta Tunnel is supposed to be 25 billion. It's 51 to 64 billion with interest and fees. Uh, the the um, bullet train is supposed to be 10 billion for the first outlay. It's 19.5 billion with interest and fees. So if we own the bank, we get the interest back. There's one state that does this, North Dakota. It's the only state-owned bank in the country. North Dakota is the only state that escaped the credit crisis. It's had a budget surplus every year since 2001. Um, and that year, when it went over budget, it did not have a rainy day fund, like Governor Brown is suggesting, or actually insisting, that, that we have a constitutional amendment so that any excess over this austere budget that they passed would go into this rainy day fund to pay off the banks the next time they have a, a crisis. Uh, in, in North Dakota, what they did was the Bank of North Dakota just issued an extra dividend that year. They were back on track the next year. They didn't need to borrow, they didn't go into debt, no interest, no fees, no um, Wall Street or bond vigilantes, etc. None of, none of the debt trap that we've gotten into by borrowing from Wall Street. So, so that's my issue if anyone wants to comment. <laughs> This yes. Can <laughs> we say yes? The public. Uh, one of the questions that often comes up is, is well, you know, I mean, North Dakota is how big is it? You know, it's like the size of a small city. But public banks are all over the world. California used to be like the fifth largest economy, now the fifth, sixth, seventh, so about the ninth now. And the other countries, particularly like Brazil, Russia, India and China, the BRIC countries, um, have public banks. Most countries have public banks. They don't have private banks. So the important thing about North, North Dakota is that it proves that a state can have a bank. It even went to the Supreme Court after they implemented it like in 1919, almost 100 years. So it proves that we can do that. And it's very important that we have that alternative. I'll add that another thing that this uh, Rosie the Riveter team, you know, this is where we'll roll up our sleeves <laughs> and uh, fix the budget, it is to um, shift the tax rate. I'm really glad to see that, what's the name of uh, Tickety Pickety, what's his name? Thomas Pickety. Thomas Pickety. Um, that his book is getting to be a, like a bestseller because basically um, he and Amanda, I think his name was Emmanuel Saez, they've been studying this stuff in the Highest, the higher the tax rate of the upper amount, everybody pays the same in the first 40,000 or whatever, the higher the tax rate, the lower the inequality. The lower the tax rate, the higher the inequality. So we, at the end of Eisenhower's term, had 91% on the income tax. Usually I ask people to guess, and almost nobody guesses that high but it's 91%. And now, the, dem the two wings of the Democratic Republican Party are fighting tooth and nail, they're so polarized, and the difference that they were fighting between was 36.9 and 39%. <laughs> and so what we need is much higher because they've, they've and, and we also need a wealth tax. There are a bunch of countries, including France and Spain and Liechtenstein, who ha that have, um, a wealth tax. They have gathered up so much wealth that that's the kind of thing that we need. So what is between a wealth tax, a wealth tax is that you look at all of these billions of dollars that they've um, gathered up from everybody else, and you look at all their assets, and you do a relatively small tax on those assets. During Occupy, my sign was um, that California had 84 billionaires with 285 billion dollars just a 10% wealth tax, usually it's smaller than that, but a 10% wealth tax would have closed the $26 billion budget deficit at the time. 
I had to keep updating. I pasted little papers on top of my sign every year because it went from 85 billionaires to 94 billionaires to 98 billionaires with $300 billion. But it's that kind of thing. The really sad part, if you did a 10% wealth tax is that maybe six of them would no longer be billionaires and they would only have like $900 million. Oh. So you'd have to somehow deal yeah. with that problem. <laughs> exactly. yeah. we, have, uh, we have about yeah, five minutes left, so we want to hear from the other three. Remember you're talking. <clears throat> oh, really? Well, I have a question about that. Though. If it's such a great idea, we well, sort of think it is, why isn't it happening in California? What's preventing it from happening? Let's assume we believe in a free market. <laughs> why isn't it happening? In three words, corporate controlled government. Which is if you vote for corporate controlled candidates, you get corporate controlled government. Well, corporate I didn't finance. Phrase that I'd say the government's been supplanted by corporations. Very true. Oh. Yeah, I think everybody heard me, but uh, I think the government's been supplanted by corporations. Um, yeah, I just, in you? general, there are great ideas, and if the market isn't allowing them, then there are obstructions. Say your name first. So, um, my name is David Curtis, C U R T I S. I've been in the state three years now. I'm a Green Party candidate. I ran for governor of Nevada in 2010. You don't know about that because all the public, or all the corporate media has been censored. They literally shut down the one local newspaper that reported on my campaign, they, they closed it down. So that's why you don't know that I ran for governor in 2010, because uh, we're in a highly controlled media environment. Um, I'd also go on to say that California currently is the most dysfunctional media environment I've ever experienced, and I come from Las Vegas. <laughs> um, California right now, the media environment is so hostile, uh, at least to me, and all of the people here today uh, may be in this room. Um, and yet I got some press. Uh, half of it is accurate and half of it is very inaccurate, the press that I've received. So, so that's my main issue right now. I didn't know it was going to be. I thought it was going to be, can I, run, can I raise enough money in the top two environment to run a functional campaign, which is a whole other topic for an hour or two. Um, but I'm surprised to learn that the main issue is a completely appropriated media that is really hostile to us still from at least 2000 and probably before then. Uh, they reject our entire premise and wish we just didn't exist. Um, the, the media. And it comes down to individual um, reporters that just buy into the crap. So, you know, I've interacted with 20 individual reporters and um, they're writing incredibly imprecise crap and, and not covering us at all. And then uh, occasionally they accidentally write some good stuff. Um, I've had three excellent articles written by three excellent reporters. I've at least identified three people standing in California, one's at the Los Angeles Times, uh, one is the uh, Cal Newsroom, and the other, uh, surprisingly, is Fox News Television. Uh, they've covered my race twice now and also twice on the radio. And because they want to help us defeat the Democrats, of course. Yeah. So, if, if I may, it's, I, I really enjoy hearing your comments, Luis, about how the media has treated you during this campaign. Barry, may I say your name? Uh, this, I'm Barry Hermanson, uh, candidate for Congress here. I'm attempting to, I, I believe I have an excellent shot, actually, of finishing in the top two in the June primary. To be facing off against the um, if there is a media blackout here in San Francisco, virtually not one word has been written about my campaign. And the same was true in 2012 when I ran. I, San Francisco Bay Guardian in 2012, a publication that had endorsed my candidacies before in the year 2006. I was one of their local heroes. I had a full page in their paper. When they endorsed Nancy Pelosi in 2012, they gave me two sentences at the end of their endorsement. This year, they have, after an absolutely pathetic 
endorsement of Nancy Pelosi, which you'll see on our, our Green Party website uh, uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, they said, if you can't stomach voting for Pelosi, here's three people that you could vote for. And they didn't even do their homework because one of the three people they mentioned was a, a guy who calls himself a Democrat, but he actually, before 2012, was a registered Republican for about seven years and, and lives in Walnut Creek. So it's, 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 it's amazing. I even have friends, Tim Redmond, who used to be uh, the editor uh, of the Bay Guardian. He has not written one word about the possibilities if a Republican is defeated in June and agreed or, or even if Frank Lara, the Peace and Freedom candidate, is alongside Pelosi in November. He has not written one word. This is, this is amazing to me. I, I, I don't understand what is happening to the media. It, even progressive media is controlled. And I wonder if you could comment a little bit on that, please. You know, I want to see if I can give her well, absolutely. Yeah, Okay, um, keeping along the lines of media yeah, coverage, your name. Sorry. Uh, Jenna Goodman for Lieutenant Governor. Sorry about that. Um, I have ran a very shoestring budget, um, very few donations. Uh, my biggest uh, donator has been the Green Party. They helped me get on the ballot, which was amazing. Um, but media coverage for me has been fairly nil. Um, I've been contacted by a few papers. Uh, luckily for me, uh, my local paper, the Times Herald, did write a few articles uh, fairly representing me. but. On the large part, it's been very hard to access any type of real media coverage, especially without having a deep pockets or much funding of any kind. Um, uh, just a quick thing, uh, uh, talking about on the public banking side there, um, one thing that I would personally like to see, uh, you know, our, our, our state budget is, is just, it needs work, and one thing that I would really like to see is a reform of Prop 13. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of the biggest area where I could see a lot of revenue coming in and having actually a fair representation of, of property taxes. But uh, th those are just my two cents. I'd like to pass the mic. Thank you. My name is Luis Rodriguez, as you all know, my name for governor. Um, I'm really glad to be part of this very important group of, of being part of people. Uh, the way that I look at the campaign mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. I am trying to connect the dots. Uh, there's three pillars that I'm working on which affects everything that everybody said here. One is the environment, clean, green, efficient, sustainable. Two, the economy, no more poverty. People living minimum wage 15, but even beyond that, livable wage, livable income. Three, the uh, social justice. And that includes a large number of people in the state who have been killed by police officers. It includes completely overhauling the prison system, which is people know is totally unjust and totally a poor people's housing system. Um, I'm trying to link them all up because I think that's what people are starting to look at. We have a large number of people in the state who are not uh, engaged in the electoral process for good reason. People say nobody votes. I go, I don't blame them. You know, first of all, you have to have somebody to vote for. Second of all, you have to want to know that if you vote, something's going to come out of it. They vote and nothing happens. So what we need to do is, at least I feel it's important to say that we're going to fight for these things no matter what happens. We won't make any deals. We won't get the corporate donations, but we're going to do it grassroots and we're going to fight for it every step of the way. One of the things I'm telling people is that if I were govern, be govern, governor, I would not be representing you. I'm going to bring you to the table. It's a whole different thing. There's the people who live in these communities know the answers. They're the experts in their lives. You bring them to the table. They got answers for the housing issues, for education. Bring the teachers, bring the students, bring the youth. Ask any student in college, and they'll give you answers for how to make the colleges viable and debt free and everything. So the idea is this brings the people to the table. It will be a Sacramento where a lot of community people will be sitting there, and um, the legislature will either pay attention or be completely pushed out because that's going to be a battle. Now, one of the things that I feel is very important is that, uh, speaking about the media thing, yes, we're being blocked out, and I totally get um, how important it is that we weren't and that people pay attention. It's undemocratic. One of the points I'm pointing out to people, it's totally undemocratic what's happening today. We can't be heard if we don't let them in. That, to me, is a not-democracy. 
You understand? You know, everybody should have been heard. Everybody's voice should have been given the same space. They're not giving it to us. There is no place for that. But one of the things that we did find out is that if you, especially with me, if you get involved with some of the battles in the communities, you will get some media attention. So I want to mention, for example, yesterday we were in Salinas, and some of you know about the big march down there. Uh, 3,000 people showed up. Wow. Woo! That's amazing. That's amazing. What's the right name that uh, got killed by the police? Well, it was uh, three people yeah. over the last 90 days. Okay. Two farm workers and one young person. Uh, it's really terrible because we saw the videos that they got, they got all over the place. You see that the cops murdered these people. People came up from all over the, the state to go to Selena. Somebody came from out of the state. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the point is, though, it's becoming those kind of things that allow. I got picked up in the Monterey Carol because of, you know, I'm involved there. They want to know why. What we're going to do is we're going to translate that into coming back on Friday and connecting the campaign to the struggle. Not too much that I want the struggle to connect to the campaign. I want the campaign to be part of that movement, part of that struggle, taking it further, getting the idea that we're going to train leaders and do people out there. Uh, there's a lot of young people that showed up and they're looking for, hey, give us knowledge, show us the ropes. They're looking, they're hungry to be connected again. So to me, what I want to end with is that to me is the future of the Green Party. That to me is the future of progressive politics. It's the future of where we need to go. Make it viable again. Train leaders. Get new, more candidates. Uh, get them out there and do not compromise one step of the way. We got to fight for these things all the way through. And then people will say, I'm going to be part of that. I want to be part of the Green Party. And I want to be part of that movement. these young people and have them write it up in their newspapers and it will filter up. It will filter up. That's one thing. Number two, I want to see us creating a public bank in this, in this state, one in the north and one in the south, before the election. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. It's yeah. just a DBA. I'll, I'll take the deposit. <laughs> yeah, because I want to have I want to have a, an account and a public bank. Yeah, I would say. The, well, I'll just jump in. The go to your local people, your friends, get some seed money, file a DBA. Have well, a I'm telling you right now what I want. I know. I want you. I know. I'm but, just telling you what I want. What I'm saying is, you cannot. Can you I don't have to it? wait at the state level. You can go to the locals and set it up tomorrow. I think it's not a holiday. Yeah. You just file a DBA and you've got a bank, and then you can seed money from the community. That's how you have a bank. That's what a bank is supposed used to be. Is the farmers would you know 
sigma. So okay, in that case, I would ask the, the, the lady who knows about this to please um, write it up so that the people who are going to do this will have instructions at the very least and some guidance, one in the north and one in the south. And then the next thing I was talking about was jumped right out of my head. Oh, the corporations. We have a problem with the corporations. We have to have a plan on what we're going to do with these corporations. They are going nuts. They're taking, they're swallowing everything they can, and they're spitting out crap. And so that's what this is. These are the things that I want you all to do. So that's why you have to vote the Green Party. <laughs> and the well, lady's I, name is Ellen Brown. I, I want, I want everybody here. I mean, these, 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 these nice six people to help us do these things. They're going to give us some guidance. And um, show us how to do this. I mean, I know how to do it. Why don't we get uh, some responses? Let's get some responses. Well, Ellen, Ellen is the most obvious. Is, is there like a, a step process that the locals can just do, like at the city, town level? Is there like a how to, you know, here's the 10 steps to start your community bank? Because I have a credit union. I belong to, a, I'm a member of many clubs, um, to be uh, a credit union in San Rafael. And I'm good. I, I'm happy with them. They never screw me over. I left corporate banking 10 years ago. I've only been with credit unions since then. You know, I'm, I'm good. I'm not waiting on a public bank. But yeah, we would love to. I, well, I the, support the idea. The purpose of a public bank is what do we do with our public revenues, meaning the state's revenues. It's, the state of California has a huge amount of money. There's $600 billion just in rainy day funds all around the state, which you can find in the comprehensive annual financial report. The, the treasurer manages a pool of $54 billion. What does, where does that money go? Right now it goes to Wall Street for Wall Street's purposes. We could be putting it in our own bank and leveraging it for our own purposes. You can have a publicly owned bank that services the public. Costa Rica has a great model. Um, New Zealand has one, et cetera. But that, but actually, the only state bank that we have, the Bank of North Dakota, partners with the community banks. And it's the community banks that actually serve the community. And the purpose of the state bank is to expand their deposit base, expand their capital base, so that they can make loans that otherwise would, again, go to Wall Street. So the idea is to get our banking back from Wall Street, the big banking back from Wall Street. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that I really like the idea of going to the schools, talking to young people. Uh, if we do have a problem with the big media not getting us, but guess what? There's a lot of young people who know how to use social media, who know how to talk to each other, who know how to reach out, and we need to engage them, talk to them, connect with them, and I believe that's a really great idea that I personally have been trying to do as much as I can, but we can do more of. I really believe that young people hold a big key to the future of what we're going to go as a big party, where we're going to go in this state. Well, and I, <clears throat> I appreciate your comment. It's one of the things that my failures in this campaign, that I, I mean, although I'm very confident that I am going to finish in the top two, I didn't go to City College. I didn't go to San Francisco State and try to make an appointment with the people who actually write those papers to see if they would do an article. Because one of my major issues is that we ought to have interest-free student loans. And oh, by the way, wouldn't it be nice to get back to something that I enjoyed when I was in college is no tuition. Right. And, and students, when they see my card and they, they look at interest-free student, I ran into somebody at Civic Center at the farmer's market a couple of weeks ago. And she, it was painful listening to her about all of her student debt and the life of slavery that she's going to be living. Debt painful. Absolutely painful. I'd just like to put something out there as well. Um, I'm a big advocate for free higher education, and I definitely think, along with Prop 13 reform, if we had a marijuana sales tax, that could definitely yes. fund our educational system. Um, I also would like to bring an awareness to a fact, I'm not sure if a lot of you know this, but I personally have seen it happening. Um, schools, newspapers are shrinking and disappearing. There's not a lot of funding there, and there are colleges that don't even have newspapers anymore. Um, so just, the, you know, so you all are aware of that. That's definitely a big issue. I'll add about Prop 13. Prop 13 has always 
made me and a whole lot of other people angry because we know what it has done to California. It's just getting angrier and angrier about it. And as controller, that is an audit that needs to be done. What has happened to California since 1978 when Prop 13 passed? And keep the good parts. There are people that, when I mention Prop 13, I mean, people call it the third rail of politics. And But somebody else said it's not just the third uh, rail, it's radioactive. People go, I love Prop 13. They love staying in their homes. We can do a better job of that. But the fact is that it is, has been a big part of turning around who's paying taxes, to have the poorest people paying taxes and the richest people not paying taxes. We spread that across the country. Guess who was governor in 1978 and had been yeah. for three years when that thing was passed? because he did not take care of business and he hasn't lifted a finger now that he's governor again to fix that. He's, they're hiding behind the skirts of Prop 13. I'm really glad that you're bringing it up, Gina. It is what it would be the first, first order of business is get the state bank rolling. Second order of business on the same day, at minute two, is get the audit of Prop 13 rolling. Uh, Frank, you're next. Yeah. Hi, my name is Frank. I was born and raised in San Francisco. Um, I just finished parole in 2012. Been locked up, incarcerated for since uh, '97, uh, whatever. But anyways, not, long story short is he had mentioned something about the incarceration, the prisons, and stuff like that, and you know, tying his political campaign to actually what has happened in Salinas. And let me tell every U.S. citizen, every person that lives in America, the United States is prepping for civil unrest. And if you don't believe me, follow the money. They've been purchasing a lot of stuff. We're talking ammunition for the DHS, for Social Security Office, MRE food rations for emergency situations, I mean, like, like you're getting video footage of, you know, trains being pulled with uh, military vehicles on them. The reason why I'm saying this is, is because soon, one day, these corporates are going to have complete control of not only just of our government, but of our military and our police department. And it's showing in our own public's eye that a lot of people are being murdered on the streets. Do you have a question? Now, my, my question was a point of clarification because you had mentioned something about Nancy Pelosi and you threw Frank Lara's name out there. And I just wanted to say that. That's what I, what I really was going to say, what I just mentioned. What I really was going to say is because um, Frank Lara, very good friend of mine, he's running for Congress. Um, we, from my point of view, we are not alongside Nancy Pelosi. Um, and uh, I don't know if that's what you meant or you, you meant another person of running also for us in, in you to know. top two primary. Okay, that's what you meant. Nancy Pelosi okay. will get the most votes in June. And the question is, who is going to be her opponent in November? And I'm committed to the fact that a Republican will not be. And if Frank can pull it off, fabulous. I'm committed to that. See, um, I met Luis Rodriguez, and, and uh, I was very proud that he supported us in the, the elders' abuse uh, action uh, of, of being evicted by these slumlords, you know what I mean? It was awesome, right. a guy coming from all the way down south, you know? Um, what's very important, what's key important is, how are we going to politically campaign to get the attention? And from what it sounds like, the first speaker... Uh, mentioned something about the schools, and I deal with a lot of schools. I was a, a student at uh, Mission Campus last year, and what I noticed is what I wanted to do. We're really going to have to. Uh, is, yeah. All right. What? Well, what? Anyways. How to get cut long, long story short, is it's like that's where it's going to have to take. And if you need leaders, you need people. If you're not getting your news media, you have activists like me. I've been in the political activism in all the major marches in California on one leg, mind you, on one leg. And we've been getting in the news. 
I met Richmond Mayor, awesome lady. We're in the news out there. And if you need help, come ask us young people. That's what I'm saying. And the colleges are where it's at. So you can use your said, you know, is I think there is a basis for us to get in the news to let people know that there's options, there's real voices and real choices. That's what we're putting out there. I think it's very important what you mentioned right now, the battle for all of us to become the second highest vote getter in these positions. And because here's the reason why, for the governor's race, as you know, Governor Brown's going to get the highest vote. We, it's a throwaway vote to vote for Governor Brown, even if you like the guy, it's a throwaway vote. But what's happened is Tim Donnelly has got the second highest vote in the polls right now. What he said is true. We gotta stop Tim Donnelly. What percentage is Well, the polls are going up and down. Seven percent is one of the percentages. It doesn't even matter. Seven? If, seven. If he has the second highest vote, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be two percent. That's the second highest. He'll be running against Brown. We don't want him to determine the parameters of the debates. We want to be the Green Party. We want us to be doing that. So mm -hmm. what he's pointing out is I think that's important. <laughs> Getting people to get out there. Get these young people to put their stake in it. We are, all about these issues are the issues that are about the free schooling, the free tuition, the housing situation. All these issues are key. Proposition 13 related to all these things. How can we get that out in the next 90 days to get it out to people and get it out to vote? One, two, one last thing. I, I found a lot of people don't want to vote, as I mentioned earlier, for good reason. They don't want to vote because there's a good reason. But now we've got to convince them there's a good reason to vote. Mm -hmm. And that's the key thing for us now. Mm -hmm. And that has become the second high vote together. So let us be the voice and the choice that you can challenge the steps for. Yeah. Luis, could you or some other people just talk a little bit more about why having the second highest vote or how that brings you into the debate and lets you have more control over the Some people may not know that there's a whole new change in the, in the elections. This is a nonpartisan June 3rd primary. 